Baseball in the Boroughs, presented by Verizon. All right, both New York baseball teams were back in action following the All-Star break on Friday night. The Yankees, they were victorious over the Rays at the stadium, while the Mets, they fell to the Marlins in Miami. So let's talk about the Mets and the Yankees to start the second half of the season and more. We're going to do that with a host for WFAN, my friend Daniel McCartan, who joins me now. Danielle, what's going on? Well, you know, just went to the Luke Combs concert last night. He was wearing a Jets hat, and uh, here I am talking with you this morning. Oh, man, that means you're excited about football season, although we're getting into the second half of the stretch with baseball season. Good time in New York sports coming up. We got through the All-Star break, but let's talk about the Mets and Yankees before we get to Jets and Giants. That'll be do that another day. We'll do that another day for sure. Danielle, the Yankees seem to lead off the second half of the season with a strong performance against the Rays, largely thanks to Anthony Volpe's key hits. What does this game say about Volpe's role and impact on this team moving forward? Uh, to me, it's more of a confidence builder for him. You know, he was hitting leadoff. He started to struggle for an extended period of time, and now they dropped him, of course, in the lineup. What is he batting, like sixth or seventh last night? And he, he comes out with a huge performance to start off the second half of the season. So if anything, I mean, to me, it's a humongous confidence boost for Anthony Volpe. I mean, when he was standing on second base, you saw the conviction in his face after he hit that double. So, um, you know, I see him forever as the quintessential leadoff hitter for the Yankees, but, you know, everybody goes through a little rough stretch, and maybe he's coming out of it now and then maybe he could work his way back up to the top third of the order or so but yeah to me it was a huge confidence booster moving forward for Anthony Volpe yeah good start for the Yankees shortstop we'll see if he's able to continue it as we go forward here in the second half we'll go on the other hand to the Mets they had a tough outing in Miami despite Jeff McNeil hitting two home runs what do you think were the main factors that contributed to the Mets loss against the Marlins on Friday night yeah that was Sean Manaya's worst starting pitching outing uh, second worst of the entire season, meaning the, the number of hits that he gave up, the runs. So I, I'm not sure why Mendoza left him in for, for so long, but um, the main reason why the Mets lost that game was the starting pitching, you know, what wasn't good enough. Um, you know, McNeil, I was reading something, or a lot of the reporters were asking him after the game, you know, kind of what changed. He, he said his whole hitting approach changed. So this might be, we talk about Anthony Volpe, like 2.0, I mean, this could be Jeff McNeil 2.0. So I'm I'm encouraged by Jeff McNeil. Um, listen, Manaya has been pretty good for the for the Mets so far this season. You know, pretty good. So this one outing, I mean, it is what it is. And unfortunately, the Mets couldn't really overcome it otherwise. But um, the main factor for that loss was Sean Manaya and the performance he put together on the mound. Yeah, bad time for him to have a bad start to start this second half. We'll see if he is able to bounce back. I want to talk to you about the Yankees and some of the young players because Ben Rice had a notable introduction with the Yankees before the break. How important is it for him and other rookies like Austin Wells to step up in the second half and what do you expect from them in terms of second half production? Yeah, I mean, those two guys, I mean, who would have thought those two guys would have been on the starting, you know, the ro roster back in April. So, you know, Wells is fitting in pretty seamlessly, but I really want to highlight Ben Rice because, you know, just was it yesterday? Um, Aaron Boone came out and, and basically said that Anthony Rizzo is not close. So I like that this Ben Rice experiment has a long runway here. I think he is fitting right in. He doesn't look overmatched. He adjusts at the plate. He's he's um, he's a guy that is what the Yankees need. He's almost anti-Yankee in the sense of he, he runs the base as well. He puts the bat to the ball. He's not looking to hit a home run every time he gets up. So for me, the importance of Ben Rice I mean, what else were you going to do without him? Put DJ LeMayhew and his 200 batting average out there, if that, if it is even that. So at first base, so for me, the Ben Rice experiment has been a very a welcome surprise for the Yankees, especially seeing that Anthony Rizzo isn't close to returning. Yeah, they had to go throw him in the fire, and he's responded thus far, at least before the All-Star break. We'll see if he is able to continue his good play as well, along with Austin Wells. Now, back to the Mets real quick, Danielle, because they've won 27 of their last 41 games. they got one of the most high-powered offensive attacks in the sport. The starting rotation has been solid, but the bullpen, eh, not so good. They've been leaky. With the trade deadline approaching later this month, I think we would agree how they perform before then could determine which direction the front office decides to go in terms of being buyers or sellers. So considering the team's recent strong play, in your eyes, are the Mets 
real contenders for the postseason. Well, leaky, uh, Dex, is a, uh, is a, is a very um, nice word to say terrible. The Mets bullpen has been terrible. So if they could shore that up, which I'm sure that is the plan. I mean, they've already started to. On July 9th, they made a trade or whatever, accusation. But um, th th if the Mets can fix their bullpen, then they're going to be in really good contention for the postseason. I'm not saying win the NL East. I don't think that's going to happen. But, I mean... I maintain all along, there is no way that this team was going to be a seller at the trade deadline. No way. You've got an owner with a huge ego. You've got a first-time general manager coming in here in the first year for him here in New York. So there was no way the Mets were going to be sellers. And now there's no doubt in my mind they're going to be buyers. There was never a doubt. But as you know, this recent uptick in, in their play, they're going to be buyers. It's, it's definite. It's case closed definite. So it's almost like, like, okay, where can they where can they improve? The bullpen has to be number one on that list. I mean, now you got these guys playing to the back of their baseball cards. Jeff McNeil is is um is you know changing his approach at the plate. Lindor has been good. Iglesias, Brandon Nimmo, by the way, is a major snub for the MLB All Star game. The guy should have been there, uh, and I'll talk about that tonight uh, on my show, but. I mean, this team is is playing together as a team. And to me, I think that the I was trying to ask Pete Alonso at the All-Star game what he thought the turning point of the season was. I mean, for me, it's got to be that players-only meeting uh, led by J.D. Martinez. Yeah, and they've turned things around, and now at the point we're talking about them as contenders. And you're right. I was being a bit kind to the Mets bullpen, calling it leaky when it's... I was, I was just being nice. I was, I was trying to be nice. That's, that's for you to be a little bit more mean there, Danielle. But, yes, I do think they need to fix that if they're going to be really viewed as contenders and they should be buyers at the deadline. We will see how all that plays out. Last thing for me, with round two of the Subway Series coming up next week, starting on Tuesday, how important is it for both teams to secure a win in their first series post the All-Star break to build momentum heading into this local rivalry. Yeah, I think I have always maintained this. I mean, you talk to the players and yeah, there's a little bit more juice in those Subway Series games, but again, they're just they're just regular games. I mean, the, you know, in the standings, you know, they're not in their each other's league, so it's it's uh, it's more of a fandom thing, uh, this Subway Series and the rooting aspect of it, but you know, it the Mets are turning out to be a good team and the Yankees if it, with a win over the Mets they could they could solidify themselves as as you know like hey we've got this you know we're we're an okay team we just beat a good team and for the Mets I mean doing it in Yankee Stadium in front of like the Yankee home crowd I mean that's a huge confidence booster for them as well so um in terms of like actually like the rivalry part of it I mean I don't think the players feel it as much as the fans do um, but you know it, it's it's important I mean every series from here on out is going to mean something and I looked uh, the Yankees have one of the easiest remaining schedules in the league uh, so that's important to, to note and the Mets are like midway they've got like a mid mid difficulty schedule so yeah I mean two big series coming up uh, you know this one current one and, and of course the subway series next week at yeah the yeah, and if you're both teams, you want to take care of business, get a series win before that Subway Series. Obviously, the Yankees would like to bounce back and take care of business at the stadium against the Mets, the way the Mets did at City Field last month. That is Danielle McCarr, and check her out on WFAN, talking everything sports. She's already excited about football season, but we got to talk about baseball here first. So, Danielle, I appreciate the time to break down the Mets and Yankees. We'll talk soon. Yeah, you got it, Dex. Thank you.